In today's notes, we're going to find a missing angle using our trigonometric ratios. So given the measure of two sides of a triangle, find the measure of one acute angle. So that's stated right here. And we typically call the angle theta. To do this, we use the inverse sine, cosine, and tangent buttons. So above the sine, cosine, and tangent buttons on the calculator, you will see the sine to the negative one, cosine to the negative one, and tangent to the negative one. Those are the buttons we're going to use to calculate um, the measure of an angle given the ratio. So let's write that above. We're going to use the inverse sine, the inverse cosine, and the inverse tangent buttons. So just like when you're in the last notes, rather, when we found a missing side using trig, the first step you need to do is identify the placement of the sides of the right triangle with respect to the given angle. And that will help you to choose your trig ratio. Remember the sine of an angle, the so. So the sine of an angle is equal to the length of the side opposite. over the length of the hypotenuse. Cosine of an angle is equal to the ratio of the side adjacent to the hypotenuse. And the tangent angle is equal to the ratio of the length of the side opposite to the length of the side adjacent. Okay. Once you uh, identify the placement, choose your ratio, you then substitute the given values into your trig equation. And then use your calculator to evaluate theta, which represents the measure of your unknown angle. And be sure that you're in degree mode. So I'm going to double check my calculator right now on the board. So I go to mode, and it is, I can see in that third row, degrees highlighted, so I'm all set. Okay, example one. So example one, in each of the ratios, sine, cosine, and tangent, they're telling you um, the ratio for the given angle. So let's actually draw a picture for each one of these. and I'll put theta in the same location. So draw a right triangle for each ratio. So given the triangle, they're saying the sine of theta, or that angle, is 2 thirds. So sine is opposite. So opposite is the 2. The hypotenuse is 3. So the sine of that angle is 2 thirds. We want to find the angle, so the angle equals, and this is what you type in the calculator. You hit that inverse sign button, and you type in the ratio two-thirds. So this is saying given the sign of an angle is two-thirds, we can then find the angle. It's very important that you put this on your regions as your work. So let's go to the calculator. I'll move this to the side. Inverse sine of two-thirds. So there's our angle. Uh, rounded to the nearest degree would be about 42 degrees. So theta is approximately 42 degrees. On your regions, it would be a good idea for you to copy that decimal down. Okay, so you have... Um, the work shown, but for me, it's okay. I just want to see this, okay? That's very important. Cosine of the angle theta is 8 over 21, so cosine is adjacent, so 8 to 21 in our picture. So to find theta, so theta equals, so this is what we're typing in the calculator, the inverse cosine of 8 over 21. 
the second cosine 8 to 21. And to the nearest degree, that would be 68 degrees. So theta is approximately 68 degrees. And then last, the tangent. Tangent is opposite to adjacent. So 17 to 16. So to find theta, type in inverse tan of 17 16. So second tan of 17 16. And that's approximately 47. And that's how you find the measure of an angle. Okay, all you do is use that inverse sine, inverse cosine, or inverse tangent button on the calculator, and you type in the ratio to go backwards to get the angle. Okay? All right, now to look at some application problems. Find the area of the regular polygon to the nearest tenth. Well, how many sides does this polygon have? That's going to help us find the area. Area is simply the number of triangles times the area of one triangle. So I'm going to draw the triangle right here. And we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 triangles. So let's just double check again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 sides, 7 triangles. So we have a heptagon. I'm going to just draw that triangle over here, larger. So we have an altitude. Remember, this is an isosceles triangle because the distance from the center of the polygon to a vertex is the same. So we do have an isosceles triangle. And the altitude bisects the vertex angle, and it bisects the base. Okay, so now let's label what we've got. Uh, we've got the altitude is 5 feet, and that's it. Well, just like with the hexagon that we have been looking at since the start, you can take right in the center here, we have a full 360 degrees. Take 360 divided by 7 to find the measure of one of those angles. So 360 divided by 7 hmm, doesn't go in evenly. So we're going to leave it as 36 sevenths. Okay? So if I need, if I'm going to look at one of these right triangles, I need half of that. And half of 360, this would be 180 over. Um, seven degrees. Okay, now we're going to use this right triangle. So to find this side of the right triangle, I'm going to use this side here and this angle. Okay, just like we did yesterday in the notes. So according to the angle, we are looking for the side opposite and we have the side adjacent. So we're going to use tangent. So tangent of 180 over 7 equals the side opposite. Well, I'm going to call that side opposite x. Okay, so it equals x over 5. Put this over 1 and cross multiply. 1 times x is x. And then we just need to do 5 times the tangent of 180 over 7. Okay? So that would be x. This is also x. For the area of the triangle, we need all the way across. So that would be 2x's. Okay? To look at the whole triangle. And 2x's would just be 2 times 5 tan of 180 over 7. And 2 times 5 would be 10. So that 2x equals 10 tan of 180 over 7 degrees. Okay, and that's our base. Okay, so now let's write out the area formula for the hexagon, or I'm sorry, heptagon. Um, so area, I'm just going to put polygon. 
because that's what they have. So area of the polygon is going to be 7 times 1 half base times height. So 1 half the base is this 10 tangent of 187. So 10 tan of 180 over 7, then times the height of 5. Now we do have um, some coefficients that we can multiply. All right, so let's go ahead and multiply 7 times 1 half times 10 times 5. 7 times 0.5 times 10 times 5. We get 175. So this would be equal to 175 times the tangent of 180 over 7. So now times the tangent of 180 over 7. And we get 84.275558292 or 29 rounded to the nearest tenth. The area is approximately 84.3 square feet. That T looks a little silly. I'll write it out. Okay. So a little bit more challenging in that the angle measure was in terms of a fraction. Okay. Um, otherwise, it's the same process and um, steps as what we've been doing before. Okay, in number three, we have overlapping triangles, and the directions say to find the value of x and y to the nearest tenth. So if we locate x and y, the x is here. So given the triangle now, do we have enough to find x? We do not. We have in order to use trig, let's put Sokoto up here. Um, it's the sine of an angle, cosine of an angle, tangent of an angle. So we need an angle in two sides. Angle, two sides, angle, two sides. So I don't have an angle in two sides within that triangle. So if I look at the triangle Y is a part of, well, Y is a part of this triangle, so that's not a right triangle. And it's also part of this larger triangle. And given this larger triangle in orange, we do have an angle in two sides. So we have the side opposite of 22 and the hypotenuse of 40. So let's use the sine ratio to find the value of y. So the sine of y equals opposite 22 over 40. So remember, we just need to type this in our calculator, but I want to see what you're typing in. So y is equal to the inverse sine of 22 over 40. So let's go to the calculator. Inverse sine of 22 over 40. And that's to the nearest tenth, approximately 33.4 degrees. Okay. Now let's go back to X. Well, in the triangle that X is a part of, again, I have an angle in one side. Still not enough. I looked and found the measure of angle Y because I had in this larger triangle an angle in two sides. So how am I going to find this one side or any side of this right triangle here. So what I'm going to do is, uh, in looking at that larger triangle, I just noticed we have the hypotenuse and a leg. So I'm going to call this Z. I'm going to find the length of Z using Pythagorean theorem and then cut it in half so that I have this segment right here, which I need to do. Um, tangent of x in that um, orange triangle. So I'm going to set it up so I don't have to take the square root. So the um, z is 
uh, leg of that larger green triangle. So the leg is equal to the square root of the square of the hypotenuse minus the square of the other leg. Okay, so if we type that in, 40 squared minus 22 squared. 1,116. Now I need to reduce that. So we need to reduce, whoops, I meant to just erase. That little dot was bothering me. All right, so we can use the calculator. Let's slide that over. Y equals 1,116 divided by x. So take a moment, scroll through your table, and see what you can find. Oh, I see one right here, 36 and 31. Um, 36 here is the largest perfect square. Um, I can know that because I know there's no perfect square factor of 31. So it's going to be 36 times 31. So z is equal to 6 radical 31. And this segment here, divide that in half, would be 3 radical 31. So now I can use this side and that side with the angle to find the value of x. So within that pink triangle, we have opposite and adjacent. So the tangent of x equals 3 radical 31 over 22. So x, we just type that in using the inverse tan button in the calculator to get the angle. So I'm going to first get the decimal. I'm going to do it in part. So 3 radical 31, enter. Divide that by 22, and then I'm going to do the inverse tan and go up and grab it and bring it down. And we get to the nearest tenth approximately 37.2 degrees. Okay, last one. This diagram's a little blurry. So the accompanying diagram shows a flagpole that stands on level ground. Two cables are in S. So this, which is blurry, is S, and we have R. They're attached to the pole at a point 16 feet above the ground. The combined length of the two cables is 50 feet. So that seems important. Let's underline that. If cable R is attached to the ground 12 feet from the base of the pole, what is the measure of the angle X to the nearest degree so that cable S, or to the degree that cable S makes with the ground? Okay? So if we look at the triangle, in order to find angle X, we need S. In the right triangle to the right, we have these two sides, and we can find the third using Pythagorean theorem. And then remember, R plus S is equal to 50 feet. So once we have R, we have S. Now, 12 is equal to 3 times 4. 16 is equal to 4 times 4. This is the 3, 4, 5 multiple. So multiply that by 4, and r is equal to 20. Therefore, s is equal to 30. Now, we have our ratio. So identify the ratio. We have opposite and hypotenuse. So that would be sine. So the sine of x equals opposite 16 over hypotenuse. 30. So x equals the inverse sine, go to the calculator, of 16 thirtieths. And we have approximately um, rounded to the nearest degree, 32 degrees. So going back to the question, 
what is the measure of the angle x to the nearest degree that cable S makes with the ground? Cable S makes about a 32 degree angle with the ground.